Hey Blizzard Nation, welcome to episode 4 of the Green Bay Blizzard Coaches Show. I'm Joey Bonadonna, that's head coach Corey Roberson. Coach, how we doing? We're doing well. <laughs> uh, so we were on a uh, two-week break since the last show. Uh, two games in between that period, we had a game last Friday, May 7th, um, against the Louisville Extreme, came out with a win. Uh, a game last week uh, on Saturday against the Bismarck Bucks, uh came out with a loss, 58-46. We'll talk about the... Uh, Louisville game first. Uh, you know, coming to that game, it was just kind of coming in one one emotional win over Massachusetts. Um, you know, it's two weeks ago, but you know, what's your what was your mindset coming to that win, game and come, trying to come out with a win? Uh, we know Louisville was going to play hard. Uh, you know, they had a bye week before that, and um, we wanted to come out and you know, coming off in a very emotional win against Massachusetts, a good team. Um, we had to play on all cylinders. Um, it was our quarterback's first start that game. Uh, Damon May and um, you know he had a pretty good performance um, and then you know we was uh you know defense played well okay so yeah with that you know the defense played well uh, special teams played well as well again and uh, you know we, we came out firing uh, of course uh, you know being a, a a good competitor like Stout is um, the guys his, his team played hard and we didn't expect anything less so um, our guys played pretty well that day and no, the end results show. Uh, one play in particular stuck out in that game. Uh, again, first play from scrimmage. Um, uh, Damian made a keys though Smith again. Uh, I think I, I mentioned it on the on the broadcast. You know that connection. You know magic happens. First play, mm -hmm. uh, May's first throw as a starting quarterback uh, over the boards to keys though. When you're watching that one from the field and you see someone go over the boards, especially on that play. You know what are you? What are you? What's going through your head? Hold on to the ball. <laughs> um, you know that that's a good. It was a good pass by uh, Damian May. I think he was a little late on the pass. He could have threw it a lot earlier, um, I believe. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it was a good play. Keyslo Smith went up, caught the ball, went over the boards. Uh, let's talk about that young man, right? Uh, Keyslo Smith. He's if three years ago he wouldn't make that catch. He's not going over that wall. So the growth that he's had over the past year and a half, uh, the two years, um, that that speaks to him and his character. Um, to, to leave it all out on the field for the team. And, uh, you know, and he, and he made that catch. That was a spectacular play. Uh, Two weeks in a row, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I mentioned it was like the, the, the Massachusetts last offensive play of the game was the throw to Kieslow. First offensive play of the game the next week, the throw to Kieslow. Right. So, you know, magic <laughs> happens. Um, right, right. It, talking about the defense in that game, uh, Corey Turner came out with a big play in that one. Uh, he'd been a, a big presence. Um, uh, on the field making tackles and plays like that but that was really one of his first plays where he was making a play on the ball it was a nice dive and grab there in the end zone brought it back out inside the five yard line gave gave your offense a short field um talk a little bit about Corey and what he's brought to this team Corey is uh he, he he's turning into the general back there uh, uh the way our safeties play um it, it's uh remarkable and, and they they making a lot of checks and stuff making sure um the secondary is intact in so um, Corey, uh, like I said, he's becoming a general. He's picking up uh, where, where some of our safeties in 2019 left off. Um, he's coming to his own. I mean, he still is a rookie, right? You know, and he's only four games in, so um, the sky is the limit for that young man. So he's starting to pick up, pick it, pick it up, and figure it out, and um, play fast, which is that what we need for our, from our DBs. Um, and we'll, we'll mention it uh, coming into this one. The, the defensive backs we kind of talked about. It's a common theme. These defensive backs really have. You know, the sky's the limit for their potential, uh, these these young rookies. But we we bring in the, this Bismarck game, a, another score on the first play of the game, carry on more, uh, doing his signature flip in the end zone. And I think I mentioned on a broadcast, um, you know, what do you say to carry on when he's flipping into the end zone? And did he flip again? He, well, he didn't flip into the end zone this time, but he did, he did another backflip. He did not Yeah. I'm gonna have to have a one-on-one -on -one with that young man. But as long as he still he continues to score touchdowns, I, I mean, I probably need to leave that alone. <laughs> uh, but you know, another score on the first play of the game. Uh, you know, kind of the whole the whole game really up into the the mid part of that fourth quarter. It, it looked like it was going to be a shootout. Um, it, we we get to that nine minute mark in the fourth quarter, up 46-45. Uh, the onside kick. Uh, there that bounced off of a buck and re recovered back for a touch, returned back for a touchdown. Uh, and then on the very next drive, fumble returned for a touchdown. At that point, it's a two possession game, running clock, 
last nine minutes. You know, take take me through you know your mindset in that last <laughs> last last fourth quarter. Mindset? You don't want to go there. <laughs> no. Uh, so we. We were squibbing the ball, so it wasn't an onside kick. Or a squib kick, sorry. So we were squibbing, and we ended up sniping the player. And um, heads up play by that young man. The uh, That ball went pretty high in the, in, in the air, and, you know, he came down with it and ran it in for a touchdown. So that was a heads up play by him. Um, 99% of the time when, when something like that happened, the, the kicking team recovers that ball. Um, it's just, the, the wheels started falling off at that point. Um, and then you talk about the next possession that we had and, you know, the fumble or whatnot. Um, I, but we still had an opportunity. That's what, you know, how I look at that game. It was still an opportunity with five minutes left in the game, us driving down. We went for it on fourth down. We ended up throwing an incomplete pass. There was no point in time to kick a field goal, right? We was down 12 points. You kick a right. field goal, you're still down two possessions. Right. So you have to go for the score. Um, we didn't capitalize, and I think that's been the theme for our offense so far this year is inconsistency. So we're looking for uh, some consistency from our offense, and, um, you know, we, we just got, we got to get better. And we, we, we mentioned it, talking about the Louisville game earlier, that game looked like it was kind of like a firing on all cylinders. Some things to clean up, but really kind of firing on all cylinders, all three facets of, of the team, offense, defense, and special teams. This one, it, kind of the same thing, like you mentioned it, just the inconsistency. But, hey, a lot of season to go. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll hop into some positives uh, on the defensive side. Uh, three forced turnovers, uh, one interception by Mamadou Mbai in the end zone. And then another interception by Mason Gray, uh, his third. That's a league high. Um, you know, mentioning Mason, uh, he had his big uh, his big game against Bismarck in Week One. Now he's come back, had a big return, and uh, uh, on his interception here in Week Four. It, hmm. What what are you seeing from Mason in these first four weeks? He's a gamer. Mason Mason's a good ball player. I think uh, all of them them guys in the secondary they feed off each other. Um, Triggs being the uh, uh, the uh, second year player in that group, um, being the leader that he is, he's done a tremendous job of um, helping them guys grow and learn and grow. Right? Um, he's he's been more vocal this year, and all them guys are like a sponge to him. Um, each one of them is a leader in their own individual way. Um, and Mason Mason is. Uh, when, when I was talking to the gentleman, they told me Mason is the, uh, he's the goofball. He's the free-spirited guy. You know, he's having fun out there. He's enjoying life. And it shows on the football field how he, he just floats around. He's always seemed to be in the right position. Um, I also want to talk about the drop interceptions he had. No, I don't want to talk about those. <laughs> I give him a hard time about that. He, DB's play, got butterfingers. <laughs> you know, um, then the, the other thing I want to mention uh, this makes it four weeks now The Green Bay Blizzard has won Special Teams Player of the Week. Trayvon Saunders won it uh, for his, his third time here in week four. Um, uh, talk about really the, the special teams has really been an asset to this team, you know, giving the offense a short field. And it, what, what have you been seeing out of the, this special teams group here in the, the first quarter of the season? Well, special teams is all about heart, right? Um, effort. You know, you got to have heart and effort on that on that play. You got to give maximum effort, and um, the guys have been showing that. Um, you know, hence the reason why we've been in position to um, be nominated for uh, Special Teams Player of the Week multiple. You know, the first four weeks um, of the season. Within you know, one week we it was only us playing one game. So, but uh, you know, uh, the guys are selling out for their teammate, and that's what you know. That's what it's about right there. You know, leaving it all on the field, playing for the next man, not playing for yourself, putting your own personal. Um, agendas aside, just for the best interest of the team, um, and that's why Trey has been the recipient of that um, hard work from from all the guys. Um, Coach Parker has been doing a great job with that group. Um, he's he's taken it and he's grasped it and, and ran with it. And the guys are feeding off of him. And his, he's a very emotional um, coach and, and very passionate about how he teaches the game and teaches them what uh, teaching them what to do and what not to do and how to go about it within all the aspects of special teams. Um, we kind of had a little late, relaxed, laid back game. This one, it wasn't, it wasn't our best effort, right? You know, we had some mental breakdowns, especially on our kickoff team, but um, overall they've been doing a great job this, uh, all four games. You mentioned it's really just kind of everyone on the team, everyone on that special teams group. I, I, I feel like it, I can't even count on one hand the amount of big plays that we've seen from guys on this roster on special teams. You talk about Malik Reeves had the blocked extra point taken back for a touchdown against Louisville. Eric Thomas scored on a return uh, this week against Bismarck. 
Trayvon over 100 yards returning again. The Garrett Kings, uh, Henry Nollert, the, the kicker, he's been a real big asset. Uh, just kind of like everyone on the team, especially uh, when they're on special teams, you mentioned it, having that heart uh, to put points on the board, put the team in good position. And um, it, it's shown uh, with that group so far this year, definitely. Um, with that, uh, we're going to open it up for questions here from our, our live audience here at TNT. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm finer than frog's hair, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, Coach, you were here as a player a uh, couple of years ago. couple, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and after your playing career, you have gotten into coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you've always wanted to do? And as you've progressed through the years of coaching and now being a successful head coach the last couple of years, uh, is there anybody out there that you study or that you try to take certain aspects of their game and, and put into yours? Uh, so let me go back to the first question. Um, I believe... Uh, uh, I've always had a passion for teaching, coaching, you know, giving back. Um, so that, that right there played a role into me transitioning after playing into coaching. Um, I think towards the, the later part of my career of playing, I think it became like a player's coach role um, with teaching the young guys, helping them get, get um, adjusted into the indoor game. Um, so I think it was a natural transition. Um, in 2012, when I became a part of the Blizzard staff as a, play, as a coach, um, Coach Fuller, Robert Fuller, gave me that um, opportunity, who's, also, who's in the Hall of Fame, um, or the IFL Hall of Fame. He, uh, you know, he, he gave me the opportunity, and um, I think the rest is history. Once the transition happened in 2018, you know, I, I never looked at it as, you know, when do I want to become a head coach? You know, I thought, I, I, I mean, I'm still learning, right? I'm still learning what a head coach is supposed to be and what they're supposed to do and all that stuff. I'm learning every day. Um, but when the transition happened in 2018, um, guys that I leaned on and um, reached out to and, and has been in my corner. So I, I, re I received a text right away from Curtis Riggs, who just got inducted into the IFL Hall of Fame, one of the gurus. He told me everything that I, you know, I've been doing, you know, I, I've been set up for this for years. You know, everything that I know as a player, let it transition into, uh, into the coaching world, right? You know, so that meant a lot that Coach Riggs, text me and um, gave me that advice and, you know, been in my corner giving me advice ever since. Um, Coach Ron O'Neill, a guy that I played for who also just got inducted into the IFL Hall of Fame. He's been a mentor of mine for years and, and especially when this transition happened in 2018, he's been right there. We've been on the phone many, many late nights. Um, a good buddy of mine who coached in Sioux Falls, Terrence Bryant, been right there. Um, I got numerous of coaches, Dixie Wooten, who we, we getting ready to battle this weekend. Um, and we go on vacations together. You know, he's been, we talk every day like, like we brothers. Um, and we talk about this football game. So he's been in my corner. You know, so I, I got to, I think I've been blessed and fortunate to have a, a, a group of men, a group of other coaches um, supporting me and giving me the type of advice. I even met with Coach Guy this offseason, you know, from Arizona Rattlers. So I think it's, this, this, this coaching fraternity has been a blessing for me um, and my growth and my experience so far. So. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd be lying if I sit here and told you, yep, I was ready for it. I knew it all. I didn't get any help. Nobody told me anything. No, I'm going to get credit where credit is due. And it's been a nucleus of men um, helping me and mold me along the way. Thank you. And you talk about being blessed. I think that all of our fans will agree that we're blessed to have you as our head coach. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, OG. Just a couple of uh, your insight on Tucson coming in on Friday. Uh, we used to have a, a pretty good rivalry with Tucson when Robert Metz left our team to move to Arizona to play. Um, Ryan Ballantyne is still playing in this league. He's what, about 65 years old now? <laughs> He don't move like it. He moves like he's still 21. Yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, E.J. Hilliard, who played, I think, for the Steam Wheelers back in the day. Mm -hmm. So what is your, uh, without giving anything away, what is your strategy for Friday night? 
I think our strategy is to go out and compete, right? You know, be competitive and um, uh, do the things and try, do the things that we're supposed to do and execute at a high level. Um, you know, like I said, Dixie Wooten is the head coach over there. He was over in Iowa in 2019 and years before won the championship in 2018. And um, he took a good uh, nucleus of guys with him along the way uh, from Iowa over to Tucson. And um, they got the reigning uh, offensive rookie of the year and um, uh, Mike Jones. So they're going to they're gonna be a physical team. They're going to run the ball. Uh, we, got, we got two similar styles and schemes that we run. Um, both of us, uh, you know, we talk a lot, so, you know, I'm prepared for what he's going to do. He's going to be well prepared for what I'm going to do, um, you know, and he's a, that's a well-coached team. Um, and, you know, we, we're going to come out and have to compete and match their intensity. Um, it's, it's their first game of the year, um, so we don't have a lot on them except for what they've done in the past, and that's what we know what he's going to do. So, um, you know, it's do what you do and, and just make it happen. So um, as far as uh, what we're going to do, uh, we, we're just going to try to keep getting better, you know. Uh, a couple of players got this saying of getting 1% better each day. So, you know, we just going we try to be better than we was the day before and the game before. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be there. There we go. So I, I want to thank Mitch because uh, that was kind of my, my closing segment there. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you, you mentioned it. This is kind of uh, their first game. Uh, new faces in their, uh, in, in their squad down there at Tucson. Dixie Wooten, uh, uh, United Bowl champion, uh, head coach, E.J. Hilliard. Uh, we mentioned it before um, with, with the battles with Quad City last year. E.J. Hilliard was definitely a big part of that Quad City team. And then Ryan Ballantyne, he's been around this league a long time. And like you said, he still moves like he's 21. So, right, right. Um, and then, of course, Robert Metz, who um, he, he was a former Blizzard linebacker, um, had moved down there to, to Tucson when the, the team uh, start it up. Um, you know, just kind of elaborate more on what you expect out of Tucson on Friday. Yeah, I think they, they may have a rookie quarterback that's going to play. Um, play this first game for sure. Uh, Ryan Ballantyne, what can you say? You know, he started his career off here in Green Bay. You know, I remember when he came into the league um, as a rookie, you know, I was his assistant coach, you know, coached him. I was a skilled position coach. So, um, you know, he, he's, a, uh, he's a great ball player. He led the league in catches in 2019, um, and it was, it was by a lot. Um, it, was, it, was, it was by a lot. So he, he is a gamer. He is an a, a, um, a IFL vet, future Hall of Famer. Um, probably, I think he's up there and leading the league in receptions uh, on his way for all-time receptions or something like that. So, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full with, with Ryan. Um, they, they bring uh, Mike Jones. Um, like I said, he led the league in rushing in 2019. Um, they got a pretty dominant offensive line. That group over there is, is probably one of the best. Uh, they, they're going to be a physical team. Um, they got the uh, sack leader from 2019 and, and Chris Martin. So um, it, it's not, you know, the season, it, you know, we had our first four games. We got our foot wet, right, you know, in the indoor game. Um, so hopefully that, that comes into play whereas though we are game ready. Uh, compared to what Tucson is, being that this is their first game. But, you know, they got a lot of veterans over there who, who, who know how to play the game. And, and uh, you know, like I said, they're they going to be a well-coached team. Well-coached team. Absolutely. So you mentioned it. It's going to be a good game this Friday night at the Rush Center, 7.05 Kids Night uh, against the Tucson Sugar Skulls. Uh, this has been the Green Bay Blizzard Coaches Show, Episode 4. I'm Joey Boydana. That's head coach Corey Roberson. We'll see you in the next episode. Go Blizz. Go Blizz.